stopped in the night alone. It was a dark and stormy night. The rain was coming down in sheets, pounding against the roof and windows of the old Victoria house. Inside, Sarah huddled under a blanket, trying to block out the sound of the storm. She was alone in the house, her husband away on a business trip, and she couldn't shake the feeling that someone was watching her. As the night wore on, Sarah's nerves began to fray. Every creak and groan of the old house made her jump, and every shadow seemed to hold a hidden threat. She tried to distract herself by reading, but the words on the page blurred together, and she found herself staring out the window into the darkness. Suddenly, she heard a sound. It was faint at first, but then it grew louder, a scratching sound coming from the other side of the room. Sarah's heart raced as she looked around, trying to locate the source of the noise. Was it a rat? Or something worse? She got from the couch and cautiously made her way to the other side of the room. The scratching sound continued, growing louder and more insistent. Sarah felt a chill run down her spine as she realized that the sound was coming from the front door. Her first thought was to call the police, but then she remembered that her cell phone was upstairs, and she didn't want to risk leaving the safety of the living room. Instead, she grabbed a heavy candlestick from the mantel and made her way to the door. With shaking hands, she unlocked the deadbolt and slowly pulled the door open. There was no one there, but the scratching sound continued, coming from somewhere just out of sight. Sarah stepped out onto the porch, holding the candlestick high, and looked around. The rain was still pouring down, making it hard to see anything beyond a few feet. Suddenly, there was a flash of lightning, illuminating the front yard for a split second. And in that brief moment, Sarah saw something that made her blood run cold. There, standing at the edge of the yard, was a figure tall and thin, with long arms and legs. It was dressed in a ragged cloak, and its face was hidden in the shadows of a hood. But what chilled Sarah to the bone was the fact that it was holding something in its hand, something that glinted in the light of the lightning bolt. Sarah's mind raced. Was it a weapon? Was it coming for her? She wanted to run back inside and lock the door but her feet seemed rooted to the spot. She watched in terror as the figure took a step forward, then another, and another. As it got closer, Sarah could see that the thing in its hand was a knife, a long, wicked-looking blade that glimmered in the darkness. The figure was now only a few feet away, and Sarah could see the blade glinting in the rain. And then, just as suddenly as it had appeared, the figure vanished. Sarah was left standing alone on the porch, holding the candlestick and trembling with fear. For a long time, she stood there, trying to make sense of what had just happened. Had it been a trick of the light? A figment of her imagination? Or had there really been someone or something out there, watching her in the darkness? Eventually, Sarah made her way back inside and locked the door behind her. She didn't sleep at all that night, instead spending the long hours watching the door and listening for any sound that might indicate the figure had returned. But when morning came, there was no sign of the strange figure. The rain had stopped, and the sun was shining. Sarah told herself that it had all been a nightmare. But deep down, she knew it wasn't just a nightmare. The memory of the figure, the knife, and the scratching sound at the door lingered in her mind like a bad omen. Sarah felt uneasy and decided to investigate the matter. She called her husband and told him everything that happened the previous night. Her husband, John, was skeptical at first but quickly realized how serious the situation was. He suggested that they contact the police, and Sarah agreed. The police arrived shortly after, and Sarah gave them a detailed account of what had happened the night before. 
They examined the outside of the house, looking for any signs of a break-in or any clues to the identity of the mysterious figure, but they found nothing. The police suggested that Sarah and John should stay somewhere else until they could figure out what was going on. They agreed and left the house, feeling relieved to be away from the eerie atmosphere of the old Victorian. Over the next few days, Sarah and John stayed in a hotel, trying to piece together what had happened. They spoke to neighbors and friends, asking if anyone had seen or heard anything strange recently but nobody had any information that could help them. One evening, Sarah decided to take a walk around the neighborhood, hoping to clear her head. As she walked, she heard a sound, a scratching sound, just like the one she had heard on the night of the storm. She froze, listening intently. The sound was coming from a nearby alleyway. Sarah approached the alleyway cautiously, her heart pounding in her chest. As she got closer, she saw a figure, the same tall, thin figure she had seen on the night of the storm. It was hunched over, scratching at the brick wall with a knife. Sarah's first instinct was to run, but then she realized that this might be her chance to get some answers. She stepped forward, trying to get a better look at the figure's face. And then, suddenly, the figure turned around. Sarah saw its face, or what passed for a face. It was featureless, with no eyes, no nose, no mouth, just smooth, pale skin. Sarah gasped, taking a step back. The figure raised the knife, and Sarah realized that it was coming straight for her. She turned and ran, sprinting down the street as fast as she could. She could hear the figure chasing her its long legs easily keeping pace with her shorter ones. Sarah ran for what felt like hours, her lungs burning, her heart pounding. Finally, she collapsed in exhaustion, her back against a brick wall. She looked up and saw the figure standing a few feet away, knife in hand. It took a step forward, and Sarah closed her eyes, waiting for the inevitable. But instead of feeling the blade sink into her flesh, she heard a sound, the sound of police sirens. She opened her eyes and saw that the figure was surrounded by officers, their guns drawn. The figure dropped the knife and put its hands up, revealing that it was just a man in a suit, with a pale, featureless mask. The police arrested him and took him away leaving Sarah alone on the street. She realized that the man had been stalking her, watching her from a distance, waiting for the perfect opportunity to strike. The scratching sound at the door had been his way of testing the waters, seeing if she was alone and vulnerable. Sarah was grateful to the police for catching the man, but she couldn't shake the feeling of unease that lingered in the aftermath. She knew that the man had been driven by some twisted desire, some dark urge that had made him want to terrorize her. And she knew that even though he was behind bars, she would never be able to forget the experience. The memory of the featureless mask and the sound of the knife scratching against the brick wall haunted her dreams for weeks to come. Sarah and John eventually returned to their home but they made sure to install a security system and to lock all their doors and windows every night. Sarah had trouble sleeping for months, jumping at every creak and groan in the old house. But slowly, over time, she began to feel safer. The police had assured her that the man who had stalked her was locked up, and she had taken all the necessary precautions to protect herself. However, one night, Sarah woke up to the sound of scratching again. She sat up in bed, her heart racing. The sound was coming from her bedroom door. She got out of bed, her legs shaking, and walked to the door. She put her ear up against the door and listened carefully. The scratching continued, and she could hear a faint whispering sound. It sounded like someone was saying her name over and over again. 
Sarah's hands shook as she reached for the doorknob. She hesitated for a moment, then slowly turned it. The door creaked open, and she saw a shadowy figure standing in the hallway. She screamed and slammed the door shut, locking it as quickly as she could. She could hear the figure pounding on the door, trying to force its way in. She grabbed her phone and dialed the police, her voice shaking as she explained what was happening. The police arrived quickly, but when they searched the house, they found nobody there. There were no signs of a break-in, no clues as to who had been scratching at the door. Sarah was convinced that the man who had stalked her before had somehow escaped from prison and had come back for revenge. She and John decided to move out of the old Victorian, never looking back. Years later, Sarah would still have nightmares about the featureless mask and the scratching sound at the door. She would wake up in a cold sweat, her heart pounding in her chest, and she would wonder if the man who had terrorized her was still out there, waiting to strike again. In the end, Sarah realized that there are some things in life that we can't explain or understand. Some fears are too deep, too primal, too ingrained in our psyche to ever truly shake off. And for Sarah, the fear of being alone at night would stay with her forever. But as time passed, Sarah gradually began to rebuild her life. She and John moved to a new house in a safer neighborhood and Sarah started to see a therapist to work through her trauma. Through therapy, Sarah learned to cope with her anxiety and fear. She also discovered that she had a strong support system in her family and friends, who were always there to listen and provide comfort when she needed it most. As Sarah healed, she also began to explore her own inner strength. She discovered that she had a resilience and a courage that she had never realized before. She started to take self-defense classes, and she began to volunteer at a local women's shelter, helping other women who had been through similar experiences. Through her work at the shelter, Sarah met other survivors of violence and abuse. She found a sense of community and belonging among these women who had also struggled with fear and trauma. Together, they supported each other, sharing their stories and lifting each other up. Sarah knew that the memory of the man who had stalked her would always be with her, but she also knew that she could choose how to respond to that memory. She could let it control her, or she could use it as a source of strength and empowerment. In the end, Sarah chose to do the latter. She refused to let fear hold her back, and instead, she embraced life with a newfound sense of courage and resilience. And as she looked back on that terrifying night, she realized that it had been a turning point in her life. It had been a moment of darkness, yes, but it had also been a moment of transformation. It had forced her to confront her deepest fears and to discover her own inner strength. And in the end, that was what had truly made her strong. Not the absence of fear, but the ability to face it head on and to keep going, no matter what. As Sarah moved forward with her life, she found that the memory of the man who had stalked her began to fade. She still had moments of anxiety and fear, but they were no longer overwhelming or paralyzing. Instead, she was able to live her life with a sense of purpose and meaning. She continued to volunteer at the women's shelter, and she even started her own organization to help other survivors of violence and abuse. Through her work, Sarah discovered a sense of fulfillment that she had never experienced before. She realized that she had a gift for helping others, and she was grateful for the opportunity to make a positive difference in the world. Years went by, and Sarah built a new life for herself. She got married, started a family, and even wrote a book about her experiences, hoping to inspire others who had been through similar struggles. And as she looked back on that terrifying night, 
she realized that it had been a defining moment in her life. It had forced her to confront her deepest fears and to discover her own inner strength. But more than that, it had also shown her the power of community, the resilience of the human spirit, and the importance of never giving up hope. For Sarah, the memory of that night would always be a part of her, but it was no longer a source of fear or trauma. Instead, it was a reminder of how far she had come, and of the strength and resilience that she had discovered within herself. And as she closed her eyes each night, she felt a sense of peace and safety, knowing that she had faced her fears and emerged stronger and more determined than ever before.